Yes, um, there's a lot, a lot of technology out there that can help uh, hotels in automate almost everything. I would say nowadays you have really different providers for different use cases, um, from the sourcing of materials to housekeeping. For example, at Oki, we collaborate with the software called Hotel Kit that has you know a lot of impact on hotel operations and how housekeeping manages the the room cleaning, but also the supply and everything they need. Uh, to upselling, which is what we do at Oki indeed. Um, I can think of omni-channel communication and there are great companies out there to payments, which is always uh, kind of a challenge for hotels. Uh, you know, there's was the, the prepaid policies uh, and the cancellation policies, which have become also more complicated recently with COVID. And um, I don't know, you can connect your PMS, for example, with providers like WorldPay or Stripe and and try to receive payments in advance from guests that have pending amounts so there's really a lot of use cases that we can cover and technologies has uh, usually developed in all the possible direction um and i think the challenge is for hotel indeed uh, how to choose one <laughs> that's that's not maybe easy um but what i think hotels should prioritize in this case is the connectivity between the systems they are using because if you have a good connectivity between every system you have in place or you intend to adopt, then ultimately you will see the customer data flow from one to the other uh, without mistakes. You will save on manual steps, as we mentioned in other questions uh, that you don't want necessarily to take because they're very repetitive and don't bring value to, to the customer. And, um, and and they need to make sure that they connect with providers that solve all these use cases that they find challenging. Because if we talk about a service apartment, a hostel or a hotel, they could have very different challenges. But the technology is there. It's about really discovering which one can help you better. It means uh, a lot of uh, benefits, actually, a lot of uh, good saving in terms of uh, time and money, I would say. Uh, there, are deal uh, there are really two things that uh, resonate to me. One is the fact that hotel can save time, and this is the most valuable resource they have inside the hotel, um, so that if they manage to save time, they become more efficient in how hotel teams work. Secondly, it's a lot about reducing errors, the ability of being very consistent over time and perform at a very high uh, quality. And, you know, sometimes manual tasks generate errors. Maybe the tasks are completed very late or they're not done at all. <laughs> I can think to bring this to a practical example, how a hotel sometimes need to provide data report to their software providers. And they do this manually, which takes uh, I don't know, uh, some time, first of all, from the team, but also it's not always precise. Data sometimes are wrong. Sometimes the sending of the file doesn't happen. So if we have a CRM or a PMS that automatically send this report to the provider in an automated way, we're saving time as we, as we said, but also we ensure a very high level of consistency. And this is needed to operate well, streamline operation, saving time and making also your team at the end of the day more successful and happy. I think um, when when doing this and between the, the balance between automation and humanization, uh, I think you have to remember that automation, I mean, first of all, is implemented by humans, for humans. And therefore, the process and the creation of that automation has to have that human element, the human touch to it. You know, it has to be individualized accordingly. Um, but when thinking about you know, the things that can be automated, um, examples include, obviously, I would say this being a hotel CRM provider, but obviously guest messaging across the various channels, the various touch points, and obviously with the appropriate personalization, depending on the amount of data that you have, the type of data you have, the message you're trying to get across, but also obviously with deference to the various data protection and GDPR rules, um, you know, that obviously you know, touch all elements of what we do. Um, think about automating data entry, um, making sure that, 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 that your, your systems and your staff are capturing the right data um, to go into the systems. Obviously rubbish in, rubbish out is what we want to try to avoid. Um, also, you know, 
think about the data that's going to be aggregated to the decision makers in the business. What you know, you know, automation of data can bring a huge amount through to the decision makers, but it has to be clear, relevant, you know, accurate, and, and in a lot of cases, simple. I, you know, being the CEO, I do, I, I do tend to find that kind of simpler the information, um, you know, for decisions uh, that comes to me, the better. Um, an obvious one for automation as well is is check in and check out. Um, for those people who who would like that automated service, and I think it's something we've seen a lot of, obviously in the in the in the last twelve to eighteen months in the COVID area uh, in the COVID era, and I expect that trend to continue, even though for certain types of organisations, for certain types of, of of hotels, resorts, I would you know there will still be some people who who will want the the personal touch uh, personal touch at check in, uh, and indeed check out when they're paying bills or they're possibly arguing about their payments and so on. Then, of course, you can think about the in-room experience, um, the ability to potentially control the environment around you in terms of light temperature, but also, uh, uh, you know, again, going back to that food and service ordering, being able to um, order room service and so on. So again, that can all be automated. And, and even better, you don't even have to provide the hardware to do that because the, the guests will arrive with their, with their um, iPhone, Android phone or, or iPad or so on. There's also consideration around housekeeping operations, around um, team scheduling, HR scheduling, that can all be automated and, uh, and put into apps and so on as well. There's, and, and through those apps and through other apps, you can also um, consider the internal staff communication. Um, we're seeing a lot of examples these days where um, hotels have, rather than build a, a, you know, a specific hospitality app in, that they, they sometimes push out their communications through WhatsApp groups, through the likes of Slack or Teams, and, I, and I'm expecting that whole development to become more and more important. Most member, all, all members of staff will be carrying their phone around these days, so, so, so let's use that rather than having to bring them to a screen elsewhere in the hotel. But not everything can be automated, so what are the things that we should automate? Um, and how do we empower staff to deliver that better service? Even if stuff is automated, we do need to make it easy for the guests uh, to be in direct contact with the teams. There's various ways to contact the team. That could be face-to-face, -face, it could be chat, phone number, email, and so on. So if you can't, it, automation won't be able to do everything, so make it very easy to, to effectively pass that task um, onto the right member of staff. In terms of challenges, um, I kind of go back to the one that I always go back to in these conversations, which is about the, the technology interoperability and the vendor willingness to actually make that happen. What we've seen in the market in, in recent times is that new vendors have emerged building cloud-based open API systems from, from the ground up. And in the meantime, which are very, very easy to integrate with, but they don't necessarily have the critical mass in the market to have huge amounts of applications um, integrating with them at scale, even though that is changing. Um, then we also have the legacy vendors that are having to adapt to that model, uh, which takes a huge amount of time, particularly in a, in, in a technology space like the hotel one. The vendors are either having to build a, a kind of business and an ecosystem from scratch, or they're having to turn a super tanker. And I think that's the, and getting all these systems to play well with each other, um, you know, throughout that space has been quite challenging, even though things are changing. And I think there's a lot of influence that's been taken from, from, from other verticals, other markets. If you look what happens in the retail space, for example. Probably also says a lot that to solve a lot of these problems that the, the large global groups, the top 10 groups have you know, in a lot of cases built their own technology or they've brought in a, a different piece of technology from somewhere out of the space and, uh, and adapted it for their own needs. So I think I think the vendors have this continual challenge here about, about trying to play well together and making it cost efficiently, making it easy for data to move around their various systems. So, but, but there is a very enthusiastic vendor community out there looking to solve these problems on behalf of the hotels. The next challenge, um, something I refer to all the time, is, is data quality. If you don't get that right at the start, it, it, it's a real struggle to make that to make it work. You, you get rubbish in, rubbish out. So it's, it's really a challenge to get good processes in place and, and good data quality flowing through all of the systems where relevant. But, but there's also the understanding of a, a challenge is often um, data flow. You know, how does data move through the business? Where should it be used? What should it be used for? Who should have access to it? What is of value to, to, to which members of staff at which level of the business? And more importantly, what isn't of value? What is what is just noise and waste? So it's, it's, it's solving all that problem as well. Another challenge is, uh, I would see as well would be staff attitudes to change, attitudes to automation, attitudes to technology. Often, particularly in, in a traditionally, you know, in an industry like hospitality, which, which has been around for a long time, automation has often equaled, um, you know, job losses and, and change and removing the human from that, you know. So you need to bring 
staff with you on this journey. You need to say that the, 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 what we're doing here will, will make the business more competitive. It will empower the business. Um, it will also empower you guys to do your jobs you know, much, much better. The opportunity presented by, if you're on top of the data and you understand it, you understand the various touch points and your staff get that, it means you can react quickly and you can pivot and change quickly if you, if needed. And I think the best example of that probably is in the last 12 to 18 months where hotels have had to shift very, very quickly depending on demand. We're obviously seeing your co-working spaces and, and obviously even before that, obviously just the reaction of dealing with COVID. And I think that's going to, that trend is, is going to continue. The market is going to take a, you know, quite a long time to settle down. There's going to be less corporates. There's going to be more leisure. There's going to be more different types of traveling, different types of, uh, of engagement with services, probably a lot more people in lobbies using laptops because they don't have an office anymore. So those are all the opportunities that are presenting themselves. and, and the hotels need the real-time feedback of, of who is interacting with the property, why they're interacting with it, and what services these people need. There's also an opportunity to make sure that the, the right data is being used in the right place at the right time, which allows a much more holistic view for strategic management of the property. And that could either be at property or it could be at group level. In, in our case, we're doing data for 30-bedroom boutique hotels up to 50, 60 strong large hotel groups across different um, property management system providers and various other source systems. So there's an opportunity to bring all that together and, and, and to, to be doing some really good, clever stuff with it. Impatience uh, is, a, uh, is a very obvious one here. I think once, once the hotels come up with the idea of doing this, they want it done very, very quickly. And sometimes that's not, you know, sometimes it's just not particularly realistic, particularly when there's technology and, and interoperability challenges around that. Um, unrealistic budgets, you know, Sometimes you'll walk in, you know, as a vendor, we'll walk into a scenario where there's there's really not very much budget on the table to do what the client's wanting to do. In some cases, you know, there's quite a lot. Um, and I, I think it's it's been difficult for hotels to get a uniform picture of, over what something is is worth. Arguably, though, the, I suppose the ones that have done a very good cost benefit analysis are the ones who, who, who get much closer and much more accurate, uh, you know, pictures of what's going on. Uh, but so I think there does need to be cost versus benefit uh, uh, analysis done where appropriate. There also needs to be a clear view of why the why the hotel is doing this. What are we trying to achieve? How are we trying to get there? And how do we break that down into a series of logical steps? And in, in, in our case, in the CRM guest engagement piece, we very much look at it as five logical and sequ uh, sequential steps that we use. Example, we need a foundation of, of good data. At the core of this, it's not going to work unless we have good data in, good data out. Beyond that, we then we know we then we need to understand the guests. We need to segment the guests, put them in the various segments and pots, come up with those journeys for them. What is this guest going to respond to? What is this group of guests going to respond to? How should we put that into practice? And then finally, how do we measure all of that? How do we validate what's happened and how do we take action based on what it tells us? And throughout all of that, we're thinking, how do we automate through this? How do we automate the guest, the hotel data through this? How do we get it out at the right time to set these things up, send them out and then measure them? And how do we link that, that back in to even better data at the start? So there you go, folks. Some very interesting insights from each of our members discussing automation. And as always, thank you for watching and your support. Until next time, it's bye for now.